Welcome to our second lesson of Hunger Games history, where we will cover the events of the second annual Hunger Games. Just like last year, a live audience was allowed to watch the games in person, from the bleachers in the Capitol Arena. However, as the first Hunger Games did not provide the spectacle people were hoping for, the audience was considerably smaller this year, and what was about to happen during the second annual Hunger Games ensured that this would be the last time a live audience would be allowed. Though, even with a smaller audience, the so-called war enthusiasts were very excited for this annual event, to see their defeated enemies, the districts, suffering their deserved punishment. Similarly to the previous year, this second year also turned out to be disappointing to most, as only 10 out of the 24 tributes managed to arrive in the arena alive, and most were too sick to fight. Everything happened because of Tiberius, a 13-year-old boy from District 6. He came to the capital very sick, with a disease which turned out to be very contagious and potentially deadly, especially among tributes who looked like they hadn't eaten in days and were already weakened to begin with. Tiberius spent a whole train ride to the capital, coughing a lot and even vomiting occasionally. Back in the early games, all tributes were transported together in the same cattle wagon. When the train they were in suddenly broke down, tributes began to fear the boy's illness, worried that all this time closed inside with Tiberius would make them catch the disease as well. The train took about 20 hours to finish its repairs, before being able to continue the journey, leaving the tributes without food or water during that period. Tiberius's condition had worsened. He would mumble a lot, and every now and then he would stop breathing and suddenly start again, startling everybody. He ends up not resisting the full trip, dying even before arriving at the capital, becoming the first fallen of that year. Due to the train's delay, the games were postponed. While they waited to be taken to the arena, the tributes were left waiting in an animal pen. As hours passed, some of the youngest and weakest tributes started to show identical symptoms of the disease that killed Tiberius. With all the time they were close together in the same wagon, it ended up spreading fast between the tributes. By the time they were finally taken to the arena, other 13 tributes had died, leaving only 10 for the competition. And even those were also demonstrating the same symptoms, the only difference lay in them being older and stronger while most of the disease's victims were very young or malnourished. When the tributes received the signal that they could start, most did not even move from their assigned mark on the floor. Those who ran to the pile of weapons in the center of the arena, due to the dizziness, could hardly stay up. The crowd started booing and screaming about the lack of action in the first few minutes, until someone in the audience threw a can of juice into the arena as a form of protest. Orchid, the girl from District 1, who had grabbed a knife from the weapon pile, lunged at a can like an animal. The unfriendly 18-year-old boy from District 2 then jumped on the girl as soon as she started drinking the juice. The two got into a fight for the can, until the boy managed to steal the girl's knife and quickly stabbed her in the neck. The crowd went wild with excitement. Wanting to keep the action going, all kinds of objects started to be thrown into the arena. The tributes completely dismissed each other's presence, and instead focused only on looking for food and drinks in the midst of everything thrown in their direction. Once they realized that only a few of the items thrown still contained anything they could consume, the tributes started fighting for them. In the middle of all fighting, the younger tributes started going into shock, due to the extra physical effort they were putting in on top of being already sick. As they observed the tributes, seemingly suffocating on the ground, the audience, not aware of the disease going around, started panicking. The scene made the capital citizens believe that the food sold to them and later thrown to the tributes was poisoned. Most abandoned their seats, rushing to leave the arena to seek medical assistance before it was too late. Desperate to get to an exit, people ran against and over each other with some of the citizens ending up gravely injured, stomped by others in the midst of all chaos. The six tributes that went into shock did not resist much longer. At that point, only Caesarius from District 2, Sean from District 4, 
and Woody from District 7 were alive. The three boys also showed some weakness, but were still standing, though none of them seemed interested in fighting. Wanting to keep the spectators' attention on the games, and not on what just happened in the live audience, the capital was desperate for some action, and in order to get the tributes to move towards each other and fight, the peacekeepers were instructed to shoot towards them, but not directly at them. However, one of the peacekeepers missed, and Sean, from District 4, ended up getting shot in the abdomen and dying, leaving only Caesarius and Woody alive. Caesarius was now kneeling on the floor, having trouble breathing, while Woody seemed to be doing slightly better than his opponent. The boy from District 7 stared at Caesarius for a few seconds, hesitant on taking action, but the peacekeepers still held their weapons, waiting for one of them to act. Using the last of his strength, Woody raises his axe to put an end to Caesarius misery. Exhausted, he falls to his knees and proceeds to vomit, as his symptoms worsen. Instead of announcing the newest victor, the peacekeepers receive a message from the higher-ups, instructing them to dispose of Woody. The head game-maker had quickly figured out what was causing the mysterious deaths of all the tributes. The disease that killed them was highly contagious, which, in already weakened individuals, could kill them in a matter of hours. She knew that she could not allow such disease to spread in the capital, when many citizens were still struggling to come back to shape after the war. That year, campaign after campaign were run in the capital, to protect their citizens from the possible disease, in case it could have infected any of the few spectators watching the games live. No citizen ended up showing symptoms, but due to the possibility of dangerous interactions between capital citizens and the tributes, the next year it became forbidden to watch the Hunger Games in person, being only possible to watch them through their live transmissions. 